Okay. All right. Gold one, EU West, champion pool. All right, so you want a champion pool for every role, two to three champs per role. I'm really bad at Kale, not sure why. Okay, so for, for mid, all right, so here, for mid, we're gonna give you Annie, and we're gonna give you uh, gold one, gold one. Uh, uh, I'm gonna give you Annie, and you say that you're really bad at Kale. But see, I, I don't feel comfortable giving you Lulu because that's a little bit weird, but uh, Kale is the nuts. Uh, let's do Oriana, I guess. Annie Oriana, there you go. Uh, top lane, you have Malphite, and you have, uh, uh, you have Garen, um, and you can have, uh, you can have, You can have Annie, you can have, uh, can, what else, AP, I guess there's not really anyone. You can have Annie, and you can have uh, Darius, and you can have, I mean, I'm just listing off a few more, but whatever. Uh, for AD carry, um, just stick to the basics right now. Um, I guess Caitlyn, and then I guess Graves is terrible, so Lucian, just stick to those. Um, and then here, another AP top that you can play is definitely Vladimir. And then for support, just stick to Soraka, and you can also have Leona, I guess. And then you can also have Annie down here if you really must, because she shares so many other lanes. Um, and then for jungle, just play, I mean, if you're gold, uh, there's a lot of generic junglers that you can just play. It doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. Um, see, gold one, gold one's a little bit weird because I don't know what your current champion pool is, um, so it's a little, it's a little weird to, uh, you know, to kind of recommend champs because I don't know where exactly you stand, although I do see around here, I play Mechanical Champs in my second account, Silver, don't play a lot of rank there, like Draven, Riven, TF, Nita, and Lee. Well, I can tell you right now, you're not playing any of them anymore. Um, you know, just because it doesn't really make any sense. Uh, and I, I know that you have questions about Riven already, but Riven's not gonna be in any of these lists, so there's that, because you, you don't need to be playing Riven. I also don't even know what your ping is, but Riven's not a, a champion that you should be concerning yourself with at this point in time. Also because Riven is one of the ultra-unique champions inside of League. And there's a few ultra-unique champions. I guess another one would be Azir, um, and then another one would be like Teemo, uh, you know, uh, what's another ultra-unique champ. Um, I guess uh, Trindamir would be ultra-unique. Whatever. Okay, so for jungle, um, I don't know. Uh, if you want super generic, I mean, okay, you can have Pantheon, although I don't know how he's doing right now. Uh, this is just safe, I'm just putting an asterisk there, Warwick is always safe. Um, you can, Let's see, what is a mechanical AD? Uh, so you can also play. Well, Nunu, Nunu is weird, actually. I don't want to recommend. Uh, you said you played Mundo, and I think he's relatively good in the jungle. Why would I ever tell someone to play Zac? I have to mute my Skype, though, because I can't have things pop up. Okay, and I, I guess that's it for your champion pool, for right now, anyway. I mean, this is just basic, and then your mid can eventually branch off into more complex things when you start to move higher up the ladder. Like, you can obviously keep Annie and Orianna, and then, like, implement, like, Lulu. By the way, saying that you're bad at Kale is really weird. Like, uh, when you say that you're bad at Kale, I mean, I would guess that you only probably played her less than 10 games, so that's not really effort, right? Um, so... You can add Lulu, you know, maybe later on if you want an AD Assassin, you add Talon. Um, maybe, you know, 
further down the road, if you want to ditto to Oriana, then you can add Lux and then whatever. And then you can obviously, like with Sandra, whatever. But stay away from TF, stay away from Zeroth, stay away from Zed, stay away from, you know, all of those champions that I, I just talked about. Um, in top lane, you know, other characters that you can eventually add to this is, yeah, with Sandra, you can add Aurelia. Um, much later on, you can add Riven if you really must. Uh, and, you know, I guess Quinn is pretty good right now, and whatever, you can add them as well. Uh, 80 carries. Uh, see, the other thing is, I don't think you should be playing uh, more than, you know, three rolls at maximum. Um, and if the dynamic queue thing or whatever goes live, then you should only have two rolls. Um, so you need to decide what you're going to pick. And generally, I suggest picking stuff that shares uh, a lot with each other. Um, you know, so either pick mid and pick top, or pick mid and jungle, or pick top and jungle. If you pick AD carry, I think you should mostly be playing either mid or support to combo with that. Um, but you should never pick mid and pick AD carry. Um, and that may sound really weird to some people, but it's not that weird. Um, so mid, AD, ca uh, AD carry and support, AD carry mid. If you're support, I think it should always be support AD carry, support jungle. Um, for jungle, I think it, jungle is the most flexible, I think, in, in the sense that you can combo it with whatever else uh, you're doing. So I don't think that's too bad. Um, how to get better at laning phase? I mean, laning phase is sort of like going to the gym and uh, working out. You basically watch what players better than you are doing, and then you try to emulate it uh, to a certain degree. And you keep working on, you know, improving the, the micro errors inside of your gameplay. And then gradually... Um, you know, it will make up the big picture, which is you just start crushing your, your Division and Elo. Something a lot of players don't understand, though, and I, I talk about this actually more or less than I should, I need to talk about it more, is that um, there seems to be a habit between lower level players in thinking that um, they should, if, if an improvement occurs, they should just instantly get out of their division, but that's never the case because I, I firmly believe that all players um, at any given time are usually within um, uh, two two to three tiers of their real MMR um, below like Diamond 3. Um, so with that being said, if you're Gold 1 right now, you're Gold 1 to Gold 3, Gold 1 to Platinum, you know, Platinum 4, Platinum 3. Um, so that's where you actually stand. So with that being said, you can attribute um, climbs and falls to variants, um, and it's not necessarily that you're better, it's just the game volume that you've put in uh, enables the truth to actually be shown. Um, that's why if you have you know, 7,000 games and you're gold 5 and you call yourself a, you know, a, a coach in League of Legends, well, I don't know what you're coaching, um, because <laughs> you couldn't even coach someone how to breathe. So, you know, that wouldn't be very wise, you know, you'd probably do much more harm than good, they'd probably suffocate. Uh, so we don't do that, right? <clears throat> so because of that, you also can't attribute, um, uh, you know, going up even five divisions as a major improvement, because small improvements enable you to climb slowly over a high volume of games. Unless you are considerably better than the MMR bracket that you're in, you should not be having 80% win, you know, win streaks, 80-90% win streaks. Um, you know, and that's whatever. So, okay. <sighs> um, what role should I prioritize? My best role is AD carry, but I don't think AD carry is the strongest at the minute. So if I'm first pick, should I go AD carry or go for the most op roll. No, the op roll doesn't do anything because then what ends up happening is you get you become a flavor of the month. So if you were like a card game player and new OP cards came out and you just played them, yes, it would probably let you beat players that, you know, are they don't even know what's going on anyway, like the people that their parents don't give them money for cards and uh, they grind out all the Hearthstone cards, you know, pay to win, LOL. Um, and that's all that would really happen. And that's only really going to occur at, like, bronze, silver, gold, etc. And only, also, if the champions are mechanically simplistic. Now, I don't think Jax is actually mechanically simplistic. I think a lot of idiots would say that Jax is mechanically uh, simple. Um, but he's not. He, he requires one of the highest understanding of uh, spacing. Uh, he requires, you know... Um, discipline of high tension situations. He requires, you know, a lot of foresight, and he requires a good knowledge of, um, you know, kiting range champions, which is, 
you know weird um but so i don't think jacks is that easy uh even though it you know it yeah it does feel nice to to two hit people generally that's not always going to be the case um, Mundo, I think, however, is fine. That's why I did throw him in there for the jungle. You can easily flex him top lane as well. Um, but I already kind of went over about how you should coordinate your roles or your lanes. So if you're an AD carry main, then either pick mid or pick support. Um, I don't think that you should deviate much from that. And do not pick OP flavor of the month champions because it doesn't result in anything. If you're the type of person that you need to be playing the pro champion picks in order to feel better about yourself because you think that you're better when you win and you think the opponent's simply just lucky when you lose, well, that's certainly not the case. Um, so don't ever get into a, a mindset like that. TP or Ignite top? Um, I think it, it depends on the champion. Um, for solo queue, though, I think Ignite probably does pr provide a little bit more EV than Teleport um, if stuff is actually going the way that it's going. Um, but I, I apologize that I can't answer this question 100 per well, 90% or higher, uh, with 90% or higher accuracy on what is probably the most optimal. Um, but that's just my assumption. Uh, I think if your champion benefits a lot from Ignite and you have a very snowball -y presence and you already come from high mobility or you know high uh, lane control, then I think Ignite can be very good. I think if your champion benefits from suffocation style approaches or you know approaches that uh, are very powerful with low economy, you know such as Rise, he has very efficient recalls and stuff, and he doesn't really need Ignite to kill someone. I think Teleport is extremely powerful also because he has extremely powerful teleports um but if you have teleport on say teemo that doesn't really make any sense because if he teleports into a team fight it just it's it's sort of like you know it, it's sort of like <clears throat> in high school you everyone invites you to like a halloween party uh, or like a costume party but it's like the middle of april and uh, you show up in like a i don't know a, a winnie the pooh outfit because you're weird and uh, no one's in costume except you. That's basically what happens when Teemo teleports, so you don't want to do that. Um, in order to improve, how many hours should I watch streams? Well, this doesn't really have a, a, a law, because right now you're going to the gym, and, okay, you're from Europe, so you're not retarded like the rest of us Americans. Um, you're going to the gym, you weigh 100 kilo, and you're like 170 centimeters, or like 175 centimeters, okay? You don't need to, to worry about um, technical aspects or advanced aspects. All you need to do is get on the treadmill and you're gonna improve. So if you wanna watch streams when you're eating, go ahead. Um, how many hours should you play? I think you should be at least getting in three to four games a night, you know, and that's pretty much all you need to do. Uh, what are the fundamentals? Well, this is stuff I talked about in other videos. Um, so if I were to ask you what are the fundamentals of baseball, you would tell me, um, you know, hitting, uh, throwing the ball, you know, catching the ball, stealing bases, whatever, you know, passing the ball, whatever, you know, passing the ball, whatever, uh, you know, getting double outs or what have you. Those are the fundamentals of baseball. So then what are the fundamentals of League of Legends? Um, the fundamentals of League is going to be CSing, objectives, I can't write, Holy shit. Okay, CSing. Okay, objectives. Uh, warding. Spacing. Alright, spacing being the gap that you create between uh, two champions, okay? Also known as like auto spacing. If uh, you're like in the 80 carry role or you're a range champion against a range champion, whatever. Spacing is generally just going to be the terminology used, though, between mages or something. Um, but, you know, it can be applied to other situations. So CS, uh, CSing, objectives, warding, spacing, um, and, you know, uh, damage foresight. Okay, these are, these are the fundamentals to League of Legends. Okay, now damage foresight also includes, you know, cooldown calculation, uh, you know, knowing when you're good and when the opponent can't really respond, whatever. Everything else, like, uh, let's right over here, sorry. Um, everything else, like roaming, this is not a fundamental. This is not, this is a strategy, okay? Um, roaming is, it, 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 by nature, is a strategy, okay? So roaming, um, you know, uh, barren sneaks, 
Okay, now a lot of people would probably attribute this to an objective. This is not an objective. This is a this is a uh, a calculated risk, or it's a you know it's, it's, it's it comes into the the strategic part of league. Okay, so roaming baron sneak um, dragon dragon sneaks, you know, and again this does not fall into objectives. Um, you know, split pushes. Um, split push in itself um, is a fundamental. Um, but it's a fundamental given. It's not so like if if like split push is a is a natural tactic throughout the history of mankind. Um, you know, attacking a location that you know the enemy is not currently at, and then you know backing off when they're out of position or they had to uh, you know break apart a you know a big portion of their army to go move elsewhere to defend against you know your onslaught, whatever. I mean, it's a given. It's a it's a natural warfare tactic. Um, but when you begin using split pushing for advanced means, okay, like uh, split to baron, okay, so when you split push to, to bait a baron or to gain control over a baron, um, that's a little bit different from just split pushing in itself. Um, so that would be, you know, that would fall under. And this is all stuff that doesn't matter. Meta doesn't matter, okay? If uh, someone watches this video and they message you or you think to yourself, you know, well, why would I play any top lane? No pro plays any top lane. You don't get to talk about the meta because you're not in the meta. Like, that, that's kind of how it works, okay? Um, any pro player could take Annie in top lane at your MMR and they would, you know, they would shit on everyone, okay, with their mouths open and then they would piss on them for good measure, all right? With that being said, we can then conclude that the champion is irrelevant to what you're actually doing. And thus we go back, you know, we go full circle to the original point that the fundamentals are all that ultimately matters at this point in time. Once your fundamentals get really key, then you start deviating from them and then you start, you know, opening up your, uh, you, you develop a, a wider range um, of what you're capable of and what you can begin making use of. And then that's pretty much it. Okay, um, what should I do in losing matchups? Well, in, in losing matchups, you should basically just calculate, um, you know, how are you losing? So if you're Nasus against Teemo, um, there will come a point in time where it doesn't matter that Teemo destroyed you for the first 20 minutes. You're going to press Wither on him, and then, if it, you know, he'll blind one of your Qs, but then one Q will connect, and it's going to be like whack-a-mole. Um... So if that's the case, then you work towards the future. If you know that you cannot win for the first 20 minutes, then just completely disregard it and farm up for that 20 minutes. You know, make use of Spirit Fire because you know that you're not getting Q stacks anyway. So concede what you want to be doing and instead fight against what he wants to be able to do with ease um, and just kind of reverse engineer it. And that's all. That's really all that you need to do. When it comes to losing matchups... Um, you know, I guess another fundamental I could even li list is tilt control. Um, but I would I would put this as just emotional discipline, not really tilt control. So I guess I, I write this wrong. Um, but emotional discipline, um, you know, I guess is it is it's, it's fundamental of any game. You know, not to to tilt off and just start making bad decisions. So let's just write emotional control. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, and that's all that you have to do. I play mechanical champs, well, not anymore you don't. Um, if you want to start practicing mechanical champions, what I want you to do first is get to Diamond 5 and then go on a silver account, okay? Not that Diamond 5 is necessarily any good, but you're going to set that as the marker first before you try, you know, making use of this. Um, and then you'll go on a silver account and then you'll start to try playing them. And then slowly and gradually, you'll try to implement them into your main, which is what I talked about a little bit earlier. And then, yeah. Um, so I guess that answers also the, the last part of your question. When do you begin to add them? In the mid game, when I when should I farm or split push? Or when should I group? Nope, you don't, you don't do that. You're not going to do that. Um, you are going to develop a very core foundation. And you're going to develop a superior mechanics, superior emotional control, and superior damage foresight, spacing, ward control, and objective control relative to your peers in your MMR. With that will come the ability and the luxury to be able to do whatever the fuck you want to them because they're so far below you that you're able to recuperate, um, you know, in, in any game. Um, 
And yeah, that, that's pretty much it. But do not worry about that, okay? Idiots tell you to be concerned with stuff like that. Um, so if your friend tells you that you don't roam enough, well, your friend probably roamed too much. And that's why he's your friend, because he's probably like in platinum and he thinks he's better than you. So there you go. Anyways, do you know any secret Korean ribbon mains? I mean, do I think best ribbon NA not buying boots? See, I don't know about nuances uh, like that. Um, and I don't know what the best ribbon build is. I mean, all that you have to do is go on op.gg Korea, do rankings, and then click champion mastery uh, rankings. But there's a lot of ribbon players that are very good. Smeb was really, really good with ribbon. Um, Lord Master King was really good with ribbon. I think he even has montages on YouTube, and he also, I think, posted on Reddit, so you can definitely look him up. Um, and I, I guess that's pretty much it. I forgot to say I'm bad with Kale. Well, I answered that in the beginning, that I don't think it's really acceptable to say that you're bad with Kale, because... I assume that you've only put, like, 10 games into her, and that's not really cool. So, okay. And I hope that answers uh, all your questions, and if not, you can message me on Skype, uh, anything additional, and I hope that helped. Okay.